All right, so we are recording. So this is gonna be for exam two. And we're just gonna briefly go over very quickly um, all of the nuances we need to know. And I'm actually in a different screen right now that nobody can see, correct? Correct. So, I like that, let's do that. There we go. Perfect. 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 All right. Now we're going to talk a lot about skin in this examination. So let's start off with our perception of jaundice. Tell me what jaundice is. Um, it's a condition that could come from liver problems, um, blocked biliary ducts, pancreatitis, and other issues. It's yellow skin, but it's also on the soles of the feet and the palms. And if I remember correctly, African-American people, darker people, it looks like a yellowish green color, if I remember correctly. So you've literally said everything I need to <laughs> Oh, okay. Example, yeah, perfect. Right, no, right. That makes my job easier. Like I said, I'm I'm helping somebody move today that can't help themselves. So um, you're actually making my timeline a lot easier and a, a lot faster. So I appreciate you. Sorry, this is this is uh, the biggest thug in the house. This is beans. So um, the only thing that I didn't hear that we do need to talk about is um, jaundice is a, a is a, a synonymous with what condition more often than not. Can you rephrase that if you don't mind? Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, what organ is directly associated more often than not for jaundice? Um, isn't it your liver? Yes. Very good. Okay. So it's very common for a person uh, in the hepatitis spectrum because it, depending on how bad it can get, it'll vary. Um, and, and that extends onto things like cirrhosis. Um, there could be biliary duct issues, which would also cross over pancreatitis would cause this if it gets significant enough. So there's, there's a lot of things involved, um, but the way that they're involved is they're all basically connected. All right. So good. Let's talk about cyanosis. Tell me about cyanosis. Um, cyanosis is people who have trouble breathing, so like COPD, asthma, hypoxia. It just means lack of O2. They have greater than three second refills. Um, with Ashy. them, ashiness, um, ashen gray. They're like for African American and their buccal mucosa. If I remember, so it shows like they're cyanotic, and their nail beds. It's not flat, but it's more like clubbed fingers. You, I have such pride for my students. Like for anybody else that's not my student that's listening to this, if, if they are, I need for you to know that this is why I stay. This is why I jump from state to state and hop on a plane once a week and are physically exhausted because I believe in my students so much more than you could ever imagine. You guys give me such pride in what I'm doing and I never regret a day of it. Even, even on the bad days when we all have a rough day. So thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, buccal mucosa, sorry, buccal mucosa on the inside of the cheek is uh, usually um, the, the lighter, grayer, whiter shade sometimes in darker people um, or a lighter pink version as well. Um, specifically ashen gray uh, of the oral mucous membranes is, is uh, most affiliated with people who just have slightly darker skin. Uh, we talked about capillary refill and all of that. We talked about O2 desaturation, which is great. We talked about uh, 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 like a, a myriad of things. So that was, that was beautiful, thank you. All right, so now let's move on to lesions. So tell me what an unusual lesion would look like, and then we'll discuss what a normal lesion looks like. 
So an unusual lesion is something that's greater than six millimeters. If I remember it's, if, I it's what, if it is what, there are two different types. There's so, one that's like a circular nevi and then there is melanoma. So which one of these am I more concerned with? So your melanoma. melanoma. Yes. And then of the melanoma, am I more concerned about its size um, and more concerned about it in millimeters or am I more concerned about it in centimeters? Millimeters. millimeters. Millimeters, yes. And why is that? It's because that means that uh, it's spreading and it's, it's super far tender. in depth. All of those things are accurate. We are most concerned with measuring it and doing something about it in millimeters because melanoma is far more serious than a circular nevi because a circular nevi is what? It's just a benign mole. Oh my God, beautiful. It's and what is our threshold for a circular nevi? One centimeter. Just perfection in a can. All right, so um, we are looking at six millimeters or greater. Uh, tell me about the shape of it. What's the presentation? So they usually have irregular borders and they're not clearly defined um, as to- Asymmetry. Yes, perfect, perfect. Are they different or are they the same from other lesions that you might see? I believe different. Because they bleed when you touch them, right? And if you, you can put a little bit of pressure on them and they'll start they'll start popping little blood little blood spots up above it right this is very sensitive tissue perfect so i heard an even color accurate six millimeters or greater accurate um asymmetry accurate change in color looking different than other lesions poorly defined border right all of those things are just perfection in a can honestly um Let's see. Let's also not forget the size specifically to the depth. Remember, we're not looking this way or this way. We're also looking this way, right? Um, and that would be the only other change or variegation of color. Remember that word variegated. It's it's like the mirror image of what it's supposed to look like. Um, and again, these things look kind of wonky. So um, if you ever feel like something is irregular, it's smarter to... Uh, check it and overreact and and be incorrect than it is to not do anything about it, avoid it, and then be very correct. And then at that point, we're, we're in a lot of trouble. So let's see. We bounce through that. Specific to, let's pop back to jaundice. There was one thing I didn't hear for regular I don't want to say regular skin people because there isn't regular skin people. For people with lighter skin, right? The the classic presentation is what I meant. Um, with a person with a classic presentation of jaundice, what do we automatically go for as a best representation of how we're going to assess jaundice? Highlighter yellow. Where specifically? In the sclera. Yes. Beautiful. All right, tell me about petechiae. Petechiae, petechiae is busted blood vessels that are pinpoint-like. Over each other. <laughs> Sorry. No. That's how you know we've both been studying. <laughs> I'm a lawyer and I'm so excited for you. <laughs> but it's like Christian said, um, the pinpoint lesions are like purplish reddish. Yes, now and if they were a bit bigger, and they were circular but sporadic, what would that be considered versus pinpoint? Uh, purpura. A pur yeah. Purpura, very good. So purplish red pinpoint lesions, yeah. Those are uh, most associated with being recognized as petechiae, whereas a little bit more blotchier is if you had an ink pen, and put it on a sheet of paper and just let it coast for like 30 seconds, that would be a better representation of purpura. Very good. Okay, tell me about nails. We need to palpate them because we have to look for uh, capillary refill. We need to look for its color and things like that to rule out you know, cyanotic processes. However, um, specific to the nail surface, how is it supposed to look? So it's supposed to be a hundred, a nail base should be 160 degrees. Mm -hmm. And it should be smooth and round. If you see horizontal lines, that's 
Bill, Bill, like Bill. Oh, Bowman. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. <laughs> Bill Mine. So that means um trauma happened, like getting their um hand shut on a door or something like that. Yeah, because when we shut our finger on the door, the nail actually bends in half and curls up. What happens is it pushes the center part of it down or wherever the trauma is inflicted. It cuts off of the capillary refill, which is why it turns like purplish, then it goes black, and then the nail falls off itself because it's shutting off its, uh, its ability to receive that blood supply that it needs, especially at the base if it hits that, that low. Very good. So what about vertical lines? Are those a natural occurring phenomenon or are those? Yes, they're hereditary. Yeah, they're normal. What are they normal to? African-American descent. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Also Native American, perfect. And yep, and indigenous. Well, yeah, because they were freedmen, right? They, they married each other to protect each other. So that makes perfect sense. So tell me about... Uh, what would be considered within normal limits for a skin and hair assessment and a nail assessment on a person? Just start rattling off things to me. So Lice. Uh, lice is irregular. Oh, so, wait, you said regular? Yeah, within yeah. normal limits. So yeah. if you see freckles on the face, yeah. um, arms, their skin trigger is elastic, they're bald, that could be hereditary. So that's completely normal. Very cool. Uh, would tattoos be considered regular or irregular? Irreg well, regular. See, this is where we get in a weird room. So we consider a, a tattoo something that we would annotate if we see that there is anything specifically wrong with it. Or sometimes we simply put, you know, left arm, visible tattoos, no other scarring, scratching, uh, anything noticed, right? That's that's perfectly okay. Or we could just elect to not put it in there at all because it's nothing that is considered remarkable, okay? So good job. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Perfect. All right, we're gonna move on. This is actually going really fast, which is what we all hope for. Ah, okay. So let's talk about, let's move on to ears. First off, what cranial nerve is that? For your ears? Mm -hmm. It'll be cranial number Four. eight. And eight. Eight. Eight is, eight is called what? The rind Vestibular cochlear. Vestibular cochlear nerve. Good. And then how do we test the vestibular cochlear nerve? Um, we do the whispering. Uh, the rinds test, whispering in front of them. Um, covering your mouth. Okay. What do we absolutely not do when we are doing a whisper test? You don't Stand behind them. And don't turn your back away. Very good. And everyone's like, why is that? Because that's the way it traditionally was. Okay, I, I understand that. the satellites can't hear you. Here's your satellites, which means the walls are back here. <laughs> so it makes it more difficult, right? So perfect. Um, and then to test the, the vestibular portion of it, what, what does that look like? You're going to have um, them close their eyes and um, lift one at a time. And do one foot, lift one foot after each other, pretty much. And swing is okay, but not abnormal swing. Yeah. That so works. all of these are fairly normal um, symptoms or symptoms uh, tests. What we usually do is we have them walk. And if they take a walk and we test them for them walking and they go kind of into a 45 degree angle, that's, that's a no-no. If we have them close their eyes and they immediately fall to the side, big fat no-no. Sometimes we have them sit into the bed and just have them simply shut their eyes and their entire body falls to the side, right? So we know that this is a big problem and we have to address it. Now, specific to the ears again, but kind of turning context around. How do I inspect the inner ear um, and what mechanical device do I use to do that? For, for the adults, you're going to put their ear... I remember correctly. You're going to pull it up. Right? Yeah. Up yeah. and over. There's one more minute. Up and back. Yes. Up and back. Very good. And then children, you pull, for, pull it for down. Up, you pull the ear up. Very good. For three and down, you pull the ear down. Very good. And I'm going to use a speculum. Is that correct? It is called uh, an, an otoscope. Yes. Otoscope. Okay. Cool. Okay. 
All right. Because right. that auto lift. It's the same. Yeah. All right. All Thank right. you. Tell me about, ooh, let's play the game of headaches. I have a headache. And this headache is weird because every time I see anything, there's rainbows around it for days. Um, and then I get nauseous. I get vomity. I Migraine. get vertigo. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. All right. What about if I'm sitting here and I have gotten a cold and I go to bed to relax and when I wake up, everything is just splitting. What is that called? Cluster headaches. Yes. Very good. And more than likely, what type of nasal drainage do you think I'm going to have? What color? Um, with nasal, it's going to be Green. watery. Brown. Well, well thick. And the, it's going to be watery, sure. But at that point, when I have so much impacted in here, right, this is probably going to be a result of some type of itis, right? So sinusitis, whatever. Oh, inflammation. So like an infection yeah. is coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So at okay. that point, it's going to be green and purulent and really nasty. So green. green. Yeah, we've all had that before. Perfect. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Ah, this one always gets everybody. And I'm just going to be really excited to hear the pronunciation of this one. So let's pretend that I decide to, well, this is weird, shave my nose off and pop it open like Mr. Potato Head. What's on the inside of that? Pink um, turbinites. Terminite. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I remember that from last night. Yeah. Pink yeah. turbinites. Very good. And what is the purpose of it? They're like our filter oh, filtration oh, system for our um, breathing. And respiratory system. Now, if it were red, is that good or bad? That's bad because they're supposed to be pink. Very good. And then what about the septum? How should it be presented? Left. Oh, left angle. Should be squat in the center. Um, if it if it if it deviates to one side or the other, that's not appropriate. Um, is it a is it a abnormal finding? Well, yeah, it's an abnormal finding that we need to annotate because if I have to give this person an NG, then I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. So if I see that there is one that is off to the left, or I see that one is off to the right, um, what would I then choose as far as a side that would be appropriate for the NG placement? The, the uh, opposite yeah. side. Yeah, and then what's the best way to test that if I think by looking there might be a deviated septum? Odor test. Oh, cranial nerve olfactory. Sure. One. Yeah, yeah. So um, not necessarily the odor test, but I, I, I know where you're going with that, right? So what you do is you close one nostril and have them clear their nose. And then if you hear a whistle at any point, you know that that side is probably not the best. So listen to both sides and see which side is better. And then use that one. Very good. Oh, because the whistle is like yeah. less than that. Okay. All right. So now let's see. Um, ooh, cranial nerves, three, four, and six. What's the test? I moment. I mean. Six filled the gaze, the um, per perla. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Three, four, and six. Three is the Snellen test. Four is the Perla, and six is the pupil, um, the eyelid and eye movement. Snellen is two. You're okay. right. Okay, okay. sorry. Fine. There's a lot of information. Snellen is two. While we're on Snellen, really quick, tell me what 2050 or 2080 or 2100 vision means. What what exactly does that mean? So 20, 20 associates with the patient and 50 associates with the rest of the general population that can see uh, in a better aspect. I like that is uh, probably the the best um, answer that I have heard at this point, And I'm very, very proud. Uh, so let's see. Let me check one thing really, really quick. Because I want to look at a couple of other notes. And I also want to see one other thing here. Okay, cool. All right, good. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Sorry, I'm flipping back and forth over here and it's not as easy as it looks. Oh, 
tell me about hmm, tell me about uh someone that has sloth and eshgar and a wound what would that be considered Sloth and Eshgar. Sloth and Eshgar. Mm -hmm. Would that be considered stage four? Sloth stage and Eshgar. Three. So if there's sloth that's and Eshgar, that's unstageable. Very, very good. Oh, and then tell me about a full thickness burn um, with subcutaneous tissue loss. Stage three. Stage three. Very good. Tell me about, <clears throat> sorry, tell me about when I touch the skin and then I let go, but it doesn't blanch. Stage one. Very good. And then tell me when I see um, exposed bone, exposed tendon. Stage four. Stage four. Very good. <laughs> You guys doing okay? You're really doing good. You have a patient who has clubbing of the fingers. What does that mean? That means they have chronic hypoxia. Bad respiratory. Yeah. Yeah, all of those things. What is what is the most common condition associated with this? Asthma. Is this asthma or COPD? COPD? Yeah, any of those are appropriate. Yeah, good job. Ah, now let's talk about respirations. Tell me what uh, apnea means. Apnea means whenever you are, um, you you stop breathing while you're asleep. Okay, good. And then tell me what a kusmal respiration is. It's rapid, deep, labored breathing. Say that one more time. Rapid, deep, labored breathing. And it's Cheyenne Stokes. Sh short, shallow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's important about a Cheyenne Stokes is that Cheyenne Stokes has varying periods of increasing depth and then apnea mixed. So this usually happens right towards the end of someone um, transitioning out of this world. Oh, agonal breathing. Yeah, so they'll be, their breathing patterns are so irregular that you will literally think, okay, they're done. Right. Like we, we we probably need to call a doc to get it confirmed. And then as soon as you think you're about to do that, they get a big. And you're like, wait, well, <laughs> OK, that's the best way to understand it. And, and and describing it, even for someone who has the ability to describe many things in this world, there are some things in this world that even the mystic autistic herself will be able to fully describe unless you've just experienced it. Yeah, it's horrible to see. It it sounds horrible, but here's the thing: you got to remember, really sad. getting out of that, it is the body releasing all of that trauma and pain that it had on the inside. So when they finally do cross over, it's um, it's, Burdenless. A, it's the last sigh of relief, right? Yeah, it's 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 both a tragic um, and sad thing, and and also a beautiful thing to be a part of in a very bizarre way. So I hope that I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you have um, respirations that are over twenty, what would that be called? Hyperpenia, tachypnea, or oh, tachypnea. Yeah. 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 And then if it's under twelve, what would that be considered? Bradypenia. I've very good. Very good. Now let me make it clear. Some say some say twelve, and I've seen eleven and ten. I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of 11 or 10 unless they're sleeping, right? So um, make sure you pay attention to those numbers. For, for purposes of exams, they usually go like nine or eight. I've never, I might have seen one 10, but usually they make it over, like they make it well over the threshold that uh, any standard textbook would have. All right, so let's see. Let's do sounds, all right? Let's say I have low pitched snoring kind of sounds during inhalation. What is that called? 
raunchy. Wait, a ra- wrong guy. Oh, wrong guy. Very good. Raunchy. I call it raunchy. <laughs> it's funny, right? But wrong guy is the technical term, and it's perfect. Don't worry about it. You guys are still learning. You know what you do. With it. All the matters. All right, let's do it again. High pitched whistling sound, musical sound. Wheezing. Uh, yeah, wheezing. Very good. Sometimes it could be inspiration if it's bad enough. All right, let's do another one. Very fine, high pitched crackling sounds and popping sounds during the session. Crackles, very good. Tell me how you would assess lung fields with your stethoscope. Say it again. Place them. Diaphragm, like place them. Diaphragm, I love that for you. And then where do we place it? On the skin. Mm -hmm. On the skin. skin, So you can hear it and not. Yeah, not over the clothes. Not over the clothes. Oh, because what happens? What what sound do you get? You hear the rubbing. Oh, you hear the friction. Fabric rub. It's literally like that. And you will mistake it potentially for a crackle sometimes. All right, good. You guys are just on fire. I love it. Almost done, guys. Oh, and we're making really great time too. Cool. I might have time to straighten my hair. <laughs> All right. When I say the word cholecystectomy, tell me the suffix of that. The suffix is cystectomy. Close. It's actually ectomy. And what does ectomy move? Or what does ectomy mean? Removal. Is the removal of the removal. surgical surgical removal? Because surgical. my mouth works so well after three hours of sleep, I just give you the answers. I'm just saying. It's fine. How about prostate ectomy? Give me uh, the definition of what that means. It's the removal of the prostate. Yes, perfect. Um, so tell me what something means if it is before. So I'm going to say this is before this. Pre. Anti. Oh. One more. Pre, pro, and time. Because y'all are pros. Yes. Good job. And uh, let's go back to ears. Wait, did I cover everything for ears? Give me just a second. Oh, okay, good. Um, I have this crazy ringing in my ears. It's so awful. That's tinnitus. Tinnitus. Oh, yeah. Tinnitus. Good. And um, Dang, I'm adding a lot more variables to these words. <laughs> tinnitus. And then, what medication is most synonymous with causing tinnitus Lasix. or ototoxicity? Lasix. Good. And what causes that uh, ototoxicity in the patient or that tinnitus, specific to um, the influctuation of the fluid being released from the body or um, eliminated. We just gonna get pathophysiological up in this camp. What I was trying to say is, what does it have yeah. to do with the time frame of pushing that medication? Um, if you push it too fast, you can cause the patient to lose their hearing. Like seriously. Let me make this clear to anybody else that's listening besides my my students. This is a health assessment class. This is the very beginning class. And my babies are thinking and they are critically assessing things on the level of an advanced practice nurse in a lot of ways. This is quite beautiful. This is why I stay. (laughs) You guys are amazing. I'm so proud. All right. Let me give you a word and then you tell me what it means. Hemorrhage. Bleeding. Bleeding out. Hemolysis. Hemo- you said what? Hemolysis. Fitting up blood. Yes. And the reason I know that and I can remember that when I was in school a billion years ago is hemoptysis. Sounds like I'm spitting. <laughs> this is this- oh, yeah. Like emesis. Yeah. Like yep. okay. I know. Isn't that great? It's like they couldn't figure out how to call it something. So they were just like, oh, yeah, it makes that sound. Let's, let, let's do that. I swear they were autistic. It's perfect. All right. We're nearly done. We're round and home plate. Round and home. Uh, 
Um, hmm. How do we ask somebody about any type of medication, alcohol, or drug abuse? How many drinks do you have on a daily basis? Why is that important? Because um, that'll determine if they are required, well, are dependent on a necessary amount their body is just in case they don't go into withdrawal or shock. What medication would we give them if they were going into a drawn start of seizing? Um, naloxone. No, just kidding. Um, it's... <sighs> okay, connect with my brain. Because I'm telling you the answer and you got this. They need to take a ride. Out of him? My darling dear. I'm so proud. Good job. Yeah. So how do we normalize these types of very uncomfortable questions? You just get down on their level and just let them know that you're here just to take care of them. You're not here to judge. You just want to make yeah. sure that yeah. they're in a state place at all times yeah let them be like, i used to drink a lot too yeah you can yeah. do this hey listen lots of people have this problem it's not a big deal right like many people have tried alcohol many people have tried street drugs many people have tried this that and the other have you tried them right because that normalizes it and all of a sudden we're not some weirdo free Right. This is why I push the autism agenda so much, because it's like, hey, listen, it's really not what you think it is. It's it's not all of the stigma that you've heard and, and all other platforms as well. More common it's than never what you hear or what you think ever. So I encourage you and challenge you to explore in that. And then you realize that, well, we're, we're actually pretty close in relation to one another. Right. Um, yes. All right. Last couple. And then we're going to hop on off. And I'm super excited about that. So give me traditional things, not my, not my modified things. Remember, because we talked about modification of how we ask questions. If I have a patient who has a confusion of any, uh, any sort, right? Specifically um, Alzheimer's uh, early stage or things of that nature or an impending new stroke. What are some simple questions I can ask them to define orientation? You don't are you, ask, you don't ask do you, that's in the long term. So you don't ask those. You just ask them, hey, how's the weather been for the past couple of days? Oh. Yep. Or do you know if it's raining outside or just yeah, the weather? Those are all, I mean, honestly, those are all good because they would have to have advanced cognitive processing to look out the window and say, oh, it's funny. Yeah, okay, good. I love that for you. Now, if I wanted something to show me their long-term processing, what would be a great question to ask? Their name and date of birth. Name, date of birth. What city you were born in is a big one, right? Because a name and date of birth is very easy for me to recall. However, I, mean, yeah. I was born in, that's a little bit, a little bit harder. But yeah, very good. We wouldn't ask them things like, have you been to the doc lately? Because that's not long-term processing. That's more short-term processing, right? So perfect. Now, if I have somebody who I know is probably having a, a moment of trauma or sadness or despair, any of those things, and then they tell me, I just don't know if I can do this anymore. What is my immediate next, next statement that I would make to get straight to the point and assess that patient for ideation? Have you thought hmm. about it yourself? Have or you anybody about? else? Oh. And can yeah. you tell me more about that? Can Why you, you feel that? More about that? I love that for you. Um, sometimes when we get an immediate response like that, we have to go straight to brass tacks. When you tell me, I don't know if I can do it anymore. I don't know if I can handle this anymore. At that point, I need to know, have you thought about hurting yourself? And my immediate next question is going to be, do you have a plan? Okay. Because when they do have a plan, that is a higher risk motive. And that is a big deal. 
huge. We do not play with that. Good job, guys. You know what you're doing. Like you guys are going to be so great. This is your first nursing class. You should not be this intelligent. I mean, of course you are, <laughs> but it's really exciting to see you guys. So, so far. all right, give me uh, easy statements again that we're going to go through for uh, easy, simple mental status examination. Again, we said, what's your name? We said, what what year is it? I heard, I heard, um, uh, what's his date? Give me- Can you tell me what this is and point to like a, a, a poster or a pin yeah. or- Yeah, uh, yeah. Can you tell me where you are right now? Right? I'm in my, I'm in my dining room. Cool. And um, mm, tell me about cranial nerve, cranial nerve uh, six. Abducens. Beautiful. What's the test? That is the lateral um, rectus. Lateral rectus and oblique, a uh, superior oblique. That's number four. Lateral oh, rectus. Wait. oh wait, lateral rectus is LR six. Yeah, left beautiful, right. Beautiful. You're gonna do the six cardinal uh, the gaze, right? That's where you put your hand towards them and tell them to see, tell you when you see their finger or something like that. That's Perla, right? The world's most dainty sneeze. Ah, good. I'm glad my eyeballs didn't pop out. I know. All right, give me cranial nerve seven. Facial. Let's see. What's the test? Pretty much smile, frown, smile, sensation faces. of the face. Favorite smile by the zygomatic arch. Snitch, you know about a zygomatic arc. Oh my, oh my, oh my word. All right, tell me about cranial nerve, uh, cranial nerve 11. That's Accessory. Your shoulders. Very good. Accessory and shrug your shoulders. Again, the hack for that is if I put my arms down, it makes the number 11. Yeah. My arms, accessories. Perfect. And then tell me what PERLA stands for. Pupillary. You're, you're there. Pupillary. Pupils. Oh, pupils. Um... E. E. Full restriction and eye movement. No, 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 no. Yes, oh, wait. Pupil, wait. Pupils equally. Pupil equal yeah. and reactive. And reactive to, to, to light. light. And? And, and accommodation. accommodation. Yes, very good. Pupils equal, round and reactive to light and accommodation. Very good. And if I were testing cranial nerve three, would I use pupillary constriction with light? With a pen light. Yes, perfect. Yes. Ah, tell me about deep tendon reflexes. So with deep tendon reflexes, um, I believe if I remember correctly, I think it's just like the deep tendon, so it depends on their response. So like if they've had a stroke or something, they won't have a response to that side as to someone who didn't have a stroke. So if they have a uh, response of a plus four, what does that mean? Hyperactive response. So that's over-exaggerated. Yes. And if it were significantly lower, what would be... The presentation of that what will we call that i mean uh, drop it that up. would be like flaccid or nearly honestly that's good okay yeah. guys like we're we're about to grab a pen and paper right now because we're going to go over some math very quickly and then that's it friends <laughs> i like i think we're just i think we're just tearing it out it's perfect all right, you ready for your number? Yes. 11.81. I want you to round to the nearest whole number. 12. 12. 
Beautiful. All right. 7.51 to the nearest hole. Eight. Beautiful. <laughs> now let's do ratio and proportion. I have a can here. And well, I don't keep other cans around because I throw them away. This is can number one, only it's this big. Okay. It has 60, nah, it's got 80 milliliters. Nah, it's got 100 milliliters of solution. Okay. And then I've got one that's the full size in my other hand. And it has got 200 milliliters. So this one's 100, the half, and this one's 200. All right. If this one has 50 milligrams in it, how many milligrams are in this side? 100. Yes, good job. Again, this is a simple ratio of proportion. Two to one ratio. Or... What I challenge you to do if you can't if you can't do the actual math in your head and you can't write it down and it bothers you, close your eyes, picture a very small cup and a big cup, right? And go like picture a McDonald's cup. One's a small and one's a medium because they don't have larges, whatever. Um, so look at it that way in your head and fill the cup up in your brain with soda or whatever. If, if it works out better that way, do it that way. That's how I do a lot of things if I'm honest. All right. Hey, uh, give me just one second because this is going to be fun. Okay, let, let me let me do this because I it needs to happen. Okay, we're going to use this with some hardcore meds, vitamin B. All right, I got pills in my hand. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll call it ten. And we'll actually call it an even hundred. Now, of this hundred, I have dropped half of those. I'm going to regret picking those up later because my back hurts because I'm old. <laughs> How many pills do I have remaining? So you said oh, there was a hundred and fifty. Ooh, that's a lot of speaking. What's happened? You, you said you had a hundred and you dropped fifty. You dropped half dropped of it. Half of so fifty. So fifty. So you have fifty left. So let me do it again. Uh, let's do, I've got 90 pills in my hand and oops, I dropped, um, I dropped a third of them. How many did I drop? 30. 30. Perfect. All right. Let me challenge you to the hard stuff while I pick out the three B12s I just dropped. I actually forgot to take one. So let me give you another number. Zero point... Mm, 284. That is in milligrams. I want you to convert it to micrograms for me. It's 284. 254. Yes, whatever number I just gave. That's absolutely accurate. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. You multiply by a thousand, right? A thousand, yeah. That's right. A thousand, yeah. All right, friends, um, let me hop out of the screen and then I want to see your bright and shiny, beautiful faces. Your bright and shiny, beautiful faces. There we go. All right, guys, what questions do we have? Because you guys, honestly, you, you, you just, it was, it was a shutdown. Shut in, shut down. It was, it was perfect. How about that? What, what do you think? It was good. Um, I just have one quick question. So you said before the, uh, before there's three things, the anti, pre and pro. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. I just want to make sure. Yeah, you're perfect. Any questions, comments, concerns? No. No. Am I going to send the recording? Oh, wait. I, I am currently recording it right now. Yep. Okay. But okay. remember, you have all of your information already for your slides, for your lecture that we did earlier. Um, and honestly, did we contribute anything new? No. 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 But I have a question. No. Yes. Um. So is it for the the order like you listen look feel you you know the order we were like we were supposed to go over and we never did but I still like the first thing I am gonna do in front of everybody is go over that order of operations with you and I will bring a sharpie marker no I will not because it's a whiteboard I will bring a dry erase marker and we will do a first thing before we even get that daggone test started cool cool 
helpful. That way everybody can see it in live form. Don't you dare forget. Okay. Oh, I won't. I, <laughs> I met you, my darling. I know that. Also, don't forget our talk that we're going to be doing on Friday. I'm super excited about it. I was thinking about it. Don't forget it. the band-aid. Do you know that I actually... You know, I ran around my house and found like, because you know, I'm neuroscience. I, I found like 10 pen lights and I'm like, oh my God, they're going to be so excited. So pen lights are covered. We got that guys. All right. I love you. I'm so proud of you guys. Honestly, I'm so proud. Get the heck back to your life and I will see you tomorrow. Oh, Thank I'm hitting you. the sack. I'm hitting, I'm hitting, I'm going to bed. The belt will go down. All right. Love you guys. Bye. You. Bye. Night.